Hi guys, it's Claris. Welcome to another video tutorial with me. We're going to be doing another simplistic watercolor floral arrangement today. Uh, exactly like the previous video where I focused on a couple of elements to create something pretty. My hope is that you will take these elements that I'm showing you and practice, practice, practice and then create your own little arrangement. So feel free to get super creative there. For supplies, I'm going to quickly walk you through what I'm using. I am using uh, my Etcher watercolor postcard again. For my brushes, I am going to be using the Princeton number no. 8, the Escada number no. 2, and then I'm just keeping the Princeton number no. 6 Filbert handy just in case I need it. Um, if you have a number no. 6 in the regular round, uh, use that as well, especially if your sheet is going to be this small. Um, this is like a 4 by 6 Then for colors, I have my 36 set of White Knights by St. Petersburg. Um, and for colors, I'm going to be using English Red, Ruby, Raw Sienna, and Chromium Oxide. So feel free to substitute those with anything similar that you may have. I've got my two little uh, bowls of water and I have paper towel handy and we are ready to begin. So we're going to start off by using my number 8 Princeton and I'm just going to walk you through the very basic idea of what we're trying to achieve here. So I'm going to do a sprig that starts from the bottom and kind of just goes as a swirl and we'll add a couple of leafy elements to it. We're keeping it simple and minimalistic here and then if you want to add more I'll leave that up to you guys alright so using my number eight we're gonna start mixing some color I've gone ahead and mixed some English red onto my palette here so we're gonna start off by using this to create our florals and then what I'm gonna do is immediately dip the same brush that I'm using into some of my ruby and get some interesting uh, blending happening by adding florals just on the side of this. So let's focus on the technique of this first flower that I'm doing and then we're pretty much repeating this, um, just kind of trying to get in some various sizing in there. So different, sorry, yeah, different sizing. And then we will go in with the ruby and kind of mimic the same thing all over again. Okay, so we're keeping this simple, especially for beginners. You want to create something pretty. You, you know, you've progressed from knowing how to create your or mix your colors. Here's what we can do. So using your the tip of your brush, we're just going to create one stroke like this, and then dipping the brush in water again. We're creating another stroke just at the side of this, and we're kind of swirling around to create these teardrop. Um, teardrop style petals. Now I'm going to get a little bit more color on my brush. I'm going to create another one here. And then right now at this point, you know what? Get a little bit of ruby on the tip of your brush and create another petal on this side here. And then as you're kind of creating more petals, just add a tiny bit of ruby onto the edges of some of the petals. So here's our fifth petal. Notice the white space in between each of these. White space is integral in this style of painting. Also, it's super relaxing for those who are just starting out and just wanna do something pretty without focusing too much on technique or, um, you know, realistic style paintings. So we're creating this floral a couple of more times on different, um, sizing scales, scaling it down a little bit, scaling it up a little bit. I think this should be the biggest one because my sheet is fairly tiny. So dipping the tip of my brush in water, I got a little bit more off my Titan Red. I'm going to go ahead and create some more of these Lucy petals here. We want to keep it light. They can be slightly touching the previous flower. We want there to be this element of you know, the, these kind of, these florals are in the background a little bit. So I'm kind, of, I'm kind of going ahead and creating a couple of them just on the outskirts of this flower here. Keep in mind, try and leave some white space, okay? Space these out because now we want to go in with the red as well a little bit, right? So I'm going to 
go slightly upward, create a couple more of these. And getting some more water, I'm just going to create some loose strokes just at the top, top of this and then just some kind of phasing off at the top. And then just dipping more water, I'm going to do a couple more at the bottom. So it's so it looks super light, the middle being the main focus, right? And these can be almost like phasing off at the top. Um, at this point, getting a little bit of that red, and I'm just adding the ruby red, just adding it to the center of these guys that are still damp. I want it to kind of blend in nicely. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm just going to create a couple more of these ruby mixed with uh, mixed with the English red rendition flowers mixed with the English red um, rendering those flowers down here that's what I meant okay so now let's go in and get some of that ruby red directly onto our brush and let's create some petals on the outskirts here as well. Getting some more, dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm going to create a couple of these petals in the background, kind of making it seem like there's some flowers off in the background attached to these guys here. Just adding a couple more of that here and there. Spacing it out, leaving some white space as well, guys. There's no need to cover everything up. Just putting some off to the outskirts over here. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, getting some more, adding it here. And then right away what I want to do is wash off my brush. And let's get some of that raw sienna that I promised you guys. So getting some of that raw sienna, Let's mix it onto our palette. And let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we've been doing. And what I wanna do is just kind of add some at the bottom. I don't wanna to do too much of the raw sienna because I feel like we've got enough happening with a lot of these florals. I'm just gonna dip or dab my brush in certain areas here on our little composition, maybe some in areas where it's damp, allowing that ruby red or even that, um, what was it, Titan red to kind of blend in a little bit. And then if you're phasing out, that is a good sign. So you've got some nice dark to lights happening. So now I'm just washing off most of the water from my brush and then just taking what, whatever is left on the brush water and smoothing things out. If you feel like your water is pooling, just take a paper towel and quietly dab, quietly dab. Okay, guys, don't make any noise when you're dabbing. <laughs> I'm joking because I'm tripping over my words here. Um, okay, so that's that. I don't think I need to do anything else to this. We're gonna go ahead and create some of the leaves to go with this. And for the leaves, we're gonna use the Escada number no. two and mix some chromium oxide. So I quickly got some chromium oxide on my palette here and we're gonna go ahead and attach these florals really quickly. So I am, uh, going to add the main stem going this way and then kind of lightly adding little strokes to kind of indicate that there's that these guys are all attached to the top you can get your color directly from your color palette for this I think that's okay so it's a nice and uh, potently dark line. If it's still damp and you're getting some beautiful runs in, that would be nice as well. See that's a little bit damp there so I'm getting some nice little blending happening. So kind of make it seem like these are nicely attached or 
keep it loosely open if you want to as well that's totally fine and I'm going to have the bottom kind of bleed not bleed extend downward like this in a thicker kind of stem and now what I want to do is just add a couple of green leaves in and around here so let's do that again we are mixing a little bit of the chromium oxide and what we can do is blend in a little bit of the um, the raw sienna too so that's why I kind of mixed it in close proximity with that just to get another variation of the color okay so the leaves can be super simple really so I've gone ahead and done a stem here and there's no flower to it so I'm just going to do something like that and that's the leaf and so try and kind of include that here and there in different areas adding another one there kind of adding one kind of falling outward and this can be indicative of like a nice little sprig of leaves happening dancing almost into the sheet or on our sheet here's another one and this area is damp so I'm going to go ahead there and add a leaf because I think it'll be a nice look nice there here's another leaf Here's another one. We're literally just adding like one stroke and then that's it. And if you feel like you want to go ahead and make it a tad bit darker, that's what I did there. You can do that. I'm going to add an extension here. By extension, I mean a leaf. I'm just adding more of an extension there and adding what looks like maybe buds at the edge. You don't have to if you don't feel like it. You could just leave it with the flowers ending there. I'm gonna add a leaf here and then kind of like a stem extending out that way just to kind of show a little bit of leaves happening here. There we go. So I think we're pretty good with the leaves and the florals. I don't think we really need to do too much more. Um, we're still trying to keep this fairly simple. If I can just stop myself now, I think we are good to move on to maybe adding a little bit of highlights uh, to the centers of the flowers. And I think I definitely want to highlight this main guy over there uh, with a little bit more of the ruby so he pops out just a bit more because we got these beautiful blends happening here and here. I'll definitely do it for that guy and then yeah, should be good. So for the center of these florals, I want to add a darker color. You could add the green, I guess, if you want to keep it within this, but I would like to introduce the sepia instead because I feel like something dark would be would really make the florals pop. So I'm getting a little bit of sepia on my number two, and we're gonna go ahead and create some little dabs of dark color in the center here. And I'm just kind of dotting it all the way around. Now the other flowers are pretty much like all over, like they're, you can tell they're flowers because they're off in different directions. So for instance, you, you kind of use your judgment and see where you need to place them. Some can be facing sideways, some can be facing like just upward. So for instance, over here, I'm gonna make this seem like this is another flower that's facing upward that you can see it clearly. So I'm just going all the way around in a circle. Here's another one, but it looks like it could be just sideways. So I did it just in a little line. This one can look like there's one of the petals overlapping so yeah like use your interpretation of how you're seeing these beautiful colors that you've laid down 
um, and allow the viewer for the finished product when they're viewing it to kind of see what you were seeing. All right, so here's another one. I'm gonna do the same thing for this. And then as we're kind of tapering out, you, you don't have to kind of really add too much detail anywhere else. You can just fizz it out by adding a couple of dots and then leaving it as is. I'll just do a couple here at the bottom. And then just some on this one. And I think we are good. Yeah, perfect. So now we're one last thing and then we are done. I'm just gonna add the, what did I mention? The um, ruby highlights for our main florals and then we are good to go. So switching back to my number eight, Princeton, I'm gonna get some ruby. Just on the tip of my brush, making sure I don't have too much water on it and I'm going to go ahead and start highlighting that flower. So just in the center, I'm just adding these little strokes. Just to give it that nice pop of color. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that ruby and I just wanna add it. So we've got it on this guy here. I think it would be nice to kind of have a little bit happening here. I wanna dab this, um, some of the strokes off that petal because I remember I said it was overlapping but it's not going off because it's darker so meh, leave it. Okay, so I think these two are okay and then we've got some nice shades of color in at the top and at the bottom. One last thing, and it's optional you can do, is adding some metallic highlights to these if you wish, and I think that would look really nice, especially for the more muted ones, and maybe even on the leaves, but otherwise, here you go, you've got this nice little swirly sprig with some cute little dancing leaves. So I hope this, guys, uh, I hope this was easy enough for you guys and you enjoyed this. We didn't end up using the filbert brush and that's okay. I just kept it handy just in case we had space to do more. But clearly we didn't end up having too much space by the time we were done. And I did want to leave it more simplistic, but it ended up being this cute little crescent moon floral shape in the shape of a moon kind of floral sprig. So, um, so yeah, that's it. So thanks guys for watching. I cannot wait to see what you guys do. Uh, tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. Show me how you're progressing. Tell me how you're liking watercolor. And if there's something specific you want to see that's more simplistic in the floral range, or maybe even outside of that, feel free to send me a message, guys. I am happy to see if I can accommodate. So thanks for watching again, and we will chat soon. Bye.